Shock the System. Welcome to Dank Discussions with me, Calican CEO Maynard Breslow. In each episode, you'll learn from the trailblazers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and influencers in the ever moving, ever growing cannabis industry. Hey everybody, welcome to Dang Discussions. Today we're joined by Kaylee Marks. Kaylee is the operator of Let's Get Baked. Thanks for joining us today, Kaylee. Hey, hey. So How are ha- you? Amazing, amazing. So happy to have you on. Uh, can't wait to talk about your business, delicious business, um, and, um, and your journey within, within the industry. You have a great story, um, so I can't wait to talk about that. Um, first, let our listeners know where you're based out of today. We are based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Very cool. And uh, did you always grow up in Arizona or uh, where, where are you originally from Arizona? No. So I'm actually from Washington State, a little tiny podunk redneck town uh, just outside of Olympia. Amazing. And I guess what I want to hear about your story, your background. So first of all, what brought you out to to Phoenix and, you know, tell me your story within the industry, you know, background, uh, your experience with cannabis and what led to Let's Get Baked. Okay. So I moved to Phoenix originally in 2012. Um, I wanted more opportunity and I also, uh, I'm adopted. And so my biological father lives here. So I just decided, let's go. It's sunny down here. It's warmer. There's less rain. Um, so I came to Phoenix and I worked in corporations. Um, the last position that I worked was, was within a university and that's actually where Let's Get Baked started. Um, I worked in enrollment and I would tell people every single day, like, if you're not happy, like follow your dreams, do what you're passionate about. Like, don't settle in life. You have one life to live, like do it. And I'm looking around myself, like probably just having a bad office day, not enough coffee, whatever. I don't know. Um, but I'm looking around and I'm like, this is not like, how do I feel here? I, I don't feel complete. I don't feel like this is my match, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm helping people. Yes. Which I love. Uh, what motivates me is helping people, but I'm not helping people the way that I want to. I don't feel fired up about this. Um, it was like number crunching, things like that. And so I've, I've been cooking. The first recipe I ever made was when I was eight years old. Um, it was a mandarin orange pie. So random as ever, but I mean, I was eight and I've loved cooking for a long time. And I got stuck in the rut, like going to physical therapy and taking prescriptions, um, everything from like anxiety to Uh muscle spasms. I refused Uh pain pills just because that's just a whole nother level of a nightmare. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Um, but even if it's like, even if you take a stomach pain pill, like it makes you drowsy, it makes you irritable and you don't have the brain power to really think and, and be the person that you are when you're taking prescriptions. And oh. so I started looking into cannabis and CBD. I mean, I grew up around, around pot. I mean, it's Washington, the greatest. Weed yeah, ever. yeah, exactly. Well, I'm from Cali, so I'm I'm a little biased, you know, being from Cali. But you know, we used, we, got, we got some oh. stuff from up there too. You know, it's it's good stuff too. You know that. <laughs> I've seen some Cali weed. It's good, but I'm I still think Washington is the best weed. We don't, we can we can well, well, have well, different well, opinions. Well, well, or we can we can have a smoke off too. You know, no problem with that. Either. Oh yeah. Uh, oh for sure. <laughs> I actually took my partner up to Washington, and she got to try. We took a road trip from uh, Arizona up through Nevada to Southern Oregon into Washington, down through Cali. I mean, all those places are legal. So yeah, yeah. we had the most, most of the budget was weed. Yeah. I mean, what a time to be alive, right? It's like, we're going right. to go on a, on a yes. and the, or, Oregon's good too, though. I'm telling you the best yeah, weed yeah. I ever had was out of Oregon. It was a $14 eight. I swear to God, it was called conspiracy Kush. It was literally $14 out of all the weed we spent. We probably spent, I mean, over, over in a uh, way too much we spent at least at least a thousand dollars just in like a couple of weeks on on weed like we tried it from everywhere and that was literally the best from washington to cali 
so yeah, that was a really cool experience. Um, but as far as the business, well, working before, at the before university. Before we get into the business, I mean, I, I guess okay. I, I want to jump in there real quick because there you are growing up in Washington. We're talking about going down this trip, right? And now you're living in Arizona, not such a friendly place, right? Like, oh yeah. So, I mean, what, what, how's that transition been in and of itself? Cause I mean, I, I want to continue in your story. It's super, super amazing, you know, but tell me kind of that, that transition in and of itself, probably kind of oh, weird, yeah. difficult, all of the above. I was scared to death. <laughs> I was scared to death to go anywhere. I, I'm not going to lie. I still am. Um, so going from the country to the city, like I'm talking, I grew up on farms. Um, barely ever went to the city, uh, like a concert one time, whatever. And then you come to Phoenix and it's like, the one thing I'll say is I love the amount of the gay culture that there is in the city. It's mm -hmm. really helped me be able to get around my people and not, I don't think, I think that lesbians are awesome. Uh, I'll just throw that out there. And so well, being around I'm, bi I'm biased. My, my fiance's, you know, mothers are uh, lesbians. So I'm biased. I love them. So I don't know. I agree. <laughs> I think lesbians are awesome. I mean, I, I mean, I guess there's like good and bad in every group of people that you're going to find, but there, there's good and bad with going from the country to the city because the people are generally nicer in the country, but they're also more closed. They have more of a closed mind. Like mm. my family called me Justin Bieber. Uh, and I had short hair for a while. So maybe that was it, but they hated it. Everybody here loved it. They hated it. It was like, grow your hair back out. Um, and then here it's like the people are more transactional. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much about when somebody comes into your house, like here, have something to drink, have something to eat. It's like, it's, it's just not part of it. Um, so it's really taken a lot to actually settle into the city. Mm -hmm. Even like traffic is terrible. I had the first gun pulled out on me at like a Circle K. I don't like going to Circle K anymore. Wait, are you serious? So, what? Somebody pulled a gun on you? Yeah, at a Circle K, just guy was just. What you were just there, die. like shopping, getting some chips or something, and some dude pulled a gun on you. So he was checking out. It was me and my lady that was in the store, and he was like being a super pervert, like right in front of us, just staring us up and down, and he. I was like, do you need something? And he's like, what? You got a problem? You got a problem? Oh and then just gosh. started getting loud, threw his drink at us, pulled out a gun. And I was oh like, God. okay, this is the city. It's, there's a <laughs> lot of craziness that happens, right? So now I don't like going to gas stations by myself. Well, people uh, on farms have guns too, you know, they're just a different, you know, it's, uh, they do. They use them for out, different they're, reasons. They're pull, they'll pull out the rifle, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but totally different that was the first time I've ever had a gun pulled out on me so the city is definitely an experience but what I will say is there's so much opportunity in a city so it's all about give and take no matter where you're at nothing is going to be perfect it's just about adjusting and picking what you want to deal with and what you don't so like for me it's totally worth it to stay here because I want to grow I don't want to be confined to I can only get this big because I'm in a small city, right? Or a small town. There, it's limited opportunity. Where like in Phoenix, there's so much networking, people, like, I've, got, I've never gone to so many events in my life as when I came to Phoenix and started my business. Yeah, so, people just love to network. Oh, exactly, and, and so, so let's go back to that now. So you're, you're, enroll, you're in enrollment, right? And, and working, uh, you know, uh, office job whatever and but now you have an amazing edibles company so how did this come about you know i know you're talking about the um the pain medications not want to take that yeah. and you know obviously background with cannabis and everything like that um but it's kind of a, a whole other thing to just be like you know what i'm gonna start an edible company so yeah you know, what, what's the inspiration it is. so i guess i just got tired of doing the same routine like i'm a person like I literally crashed my computer and had to self-diagnose it. Anybody who works in an office understands the tech problems that come with it. Like I, I worked too fast for my computer and they literally told me like, you need to slow it down. Like don't work so hard. What are you talking about? I'm a busybody. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and that's why I excel when I work, wherever I work. It doesn't matter where it is. I've always advanced. I've written training manuals for companies. I've like, I've done so much hired recruiting, all of that. And so just sitting at work one day with my hot pad because my back hurts, right? Oh, Old oh. lady over here, 90 years old, but not. Um, it was just a mesh of things like not wanting, not really feeling like I fit into the culture, oh. um, being in so much pain and then the tech issues and telling people every day, like follow your dreams. Well, why don't I do something that I love? Like what is stopping me from taking that risk on myself? Um, so I was working full time. I was uh, taking two classes, getting involved with uh, honor society. So I'm a, a full-time business student. So I do that. So it was my bit. So I started my business. I, well, I just applied for it one day. I was just like, you know what? I love cooking. I started infusing in my own house. Like I literally ordered books off of Amazon and just did research. How do you infuse? What, like, what are the process? I looked at all these different, like, chefs and how they were doing their own infusion process. I read these books and I just took something from all of them and I just started cooking. And then the people in the office were like, what are you doing? Like, you seem so much happier. Like you're walking around better. Like you just genuinely seem happier. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, weird. Like you're noticing. Cause I'm not saying, wow. like, Hey, I'm, I'm smoking weed, you know, like, I'm not going to tell my mom. <laughs> um, so, so I, I was just like, listen, CBD, like I, I was using CBD and I, and I smoked weed. So I told one person that I was comfortable with, come to find out, like my manager actually uh, found out that her, her husband was divorcing her. They decided to go oh. through a divorce and she comes to me and she's like, Kaylee, like, I need your help. Like, can you just like, let me use some of your CBD drops. I was like, okay. Cause that's what I would use at work. I'm not gonna, like, don't yeah. get me wrong. I mean, I did, I did smoke my vape pen, but they didn't see me. <laughs> um, so I gave her some of my CBD drops and I ended up getting off of work cause I worked the earlier shift and the, 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 that night I texted her and I was like, Hey, how did you do? Like, are you doing okay? Like, what's up? She said, Kaylee, I literally had one of the best conversations I've ever had with a student. Like right after you left, like the best conversations and keep in mind, she just was like in tears talking about wow. her divorce. Oh this is the only man she's been with. She's had like, wow. she has a kid with him, all this. She takes a few CBD drops and she's like, I didn't feel a kick in or anything. I didn't even notice it. Like, and then when I was reflecting on the day, when you asked me, I realized, wow, it, it really did help. Like, so I started seeing it like with her. Um, and then a couple isn't, of my isn't that funny, people, isn't that funny where she's like, I didn't see it. Right. She didn't, we always wait for something to happen, you know, and that, that's the whole thing. Well, yeah. Everything. We we're, yeah. We're waiting for something to feel something to, to a psychoactive factor or, or a sensation, you know, something going on. And with the CBD, it's, it's not like that. Right. And I think uh, right. that's people kind of miss the point. Like you said, she kind of reflecting on the day and saying, Holy crap. Like I had this shitty beginning of the day. And then all of a sudden I had the best conversation. I was able to be there with my students and, Right. You know, and, uh, and I felt it, it because for her to be going through something so devastating and then not even like knowing anything about CBD, just me telling her some information being like, listen, just try this. So it's not like she had thoughts in her brain about how this was going to respond with her. Cause some people, you can make things happen. That's why they give like those little fake pills or whatever that placebos or whatever, so that they can uh -huh. sometimes yeah. it's just in your mind. But she's like, now that you asked me, like, it was great. And it made me feel great because I saw that in her, right? Um, and then she started coming to me more often and just, even just CBD, like, it doesn't have to be like, you have to smoke weed. The cannabis plant in itself has so many amazing uh -huh. healing properties uh -huh. in so many different areas. So everything from pain to anxiety, stress, all of that. Um, even your muscles, like for post-workout. So 
when I saw how it affected her when she was going through what she did, and then other people started coming to me like, hey, like, I'm having problems with class. I can't sleep. Wow. Um, my my best friend, he is a veteran, and he Whoa. has a very hard time sleeping. And Whoa. he started using my products, and he told me he could actually sleep through the night, Whoa. which was huge for him because they have him on all types of medication. Oh, yeah. Well, why aren't your medications working? Like, if you're coming to me, but you're still taking this, why? It's horrible. And then they t- it's horrible. And then it was literally like the next week they told him he could not use CBD uh, cannabis, anything like that. So then they banned it. So then he just got a taste of being able to sleep and now they're pulling it back. So I'm really hoping that that can change, but everything is a process. It's, no, it's, it's also still devastating. Weird. I mean, with the veterans, you know, sending them, sending them over there, being exposed, you know, PTSD, anxiety, they come back with so many things, pain management, right? And then they pump them full of pills and then they're not going to let them to have a natural remedy. Right. Um, right and, and, it's, and it's why just absolutely ridiculous so, you know and I, I i work with veterans um you know and what we do and um you know the benefits and it, and it sucks like why can't people on active duty right people who are still in there right it's just incredible um it's, it's really because really think about it you still have your brain right mm-hmm. like you take cbd it's not like she felt it kick in it wasn't yeah, it's non-psychoactive came it's complete, came above her. yeah but then you have like okay, you want me to take an anxiety medication? Your brain, is, you're, you're not with it. And wouldn't mm-hmm. you want somebody to be able to think through things before acting? Like if you're on, if, you're, if you have PTSD, I have PTSD. Mm-hmm. If you're on pills and it's just fogging your judgment, that doesn't make you think through things. Clearly you're just slower to respond and you're irritable. So you're more hateful and it's a buildup. If you're using CBD, like, I don't have a, a hangover from my CBD last night. You know what I mean? Like it's, you can use your brain better. You don't have, you don't feel it kick in. There's not all the side effects and it helps with so much. I don't see where the logic is in pushing these pills when they're not even actually fixing the problem. They're covering them up and then people can't function. And then there's all these additional pills they add just to counteract the other. Whereas cannabis, it's like, yeah, there's different parts of the plant you can use for various things, but why not more of a natural approach? It doesn't make sense to me. I stopped taking all prescriptions um, after I started using CBD and making the edibles. Mm -hmm. I stopped taking the 22 prescriptions that I was taking Wow. and solely used cannabis and CBD. Now, I have stomach pain here and there, and I have pain in my back here and there, and you know, it's not I'm a magic bullet. It's not like, there. you know, it's not a magic, uh, you know, cure all of everything. But, yeah. you know, what it what it does for people and, and for all of us, you know, allowing us to, to get off the medications. And, and, you know, like I said, it's nothing's perfect, right? You take the pills, taking the 22 pills, I'm sure you had all kinds of side effects, all kinds of things exactly. going on that you're it's not experiencing anymore. Yeah, exactly. I would much rather have a, some pain, some anxiousness. I'm still human right? You just have to accept and try to find different ways. Like if my back is hurting really bad, I have a hot pad. Uh Like I would rather use a hot pad than take an ibuprofen or whatever, like stretching, exercising, pushing yourself, not just taking the easy route of popping a pill goes a long way. So yeah, maybe it's not a perfect solution but I'm telling you that my life went from being like, I was unhappy, like depression. I went from being an athlete to barely walking and I felt it right. Like I felt defeated when I was taking all of this, going to physical therapy, doing my part. And I was still like miserable. I was in so much pain, like my brain, I wasn't even myself. So where I can use cannabis and cook with cannabis and CBD and all of that, I would much rather be the person I am today where I'm ambitious. I get a like, I work hard. I help people anytime I can because I have my mind to be able to, to utilize it where when I was on the anxiety meds and everything there, I didn't really want to leave my house. Uh 
you know? And so it's made a huge impact on my life. And with being able to use my brain, it's like, now I can take a chance on myself. Let me do this. If I fail, at least I failed trying, right? Mm. And failure is a part of success. So 100%. when I worked at the university, I literally just applied for the license and like, I didn't hesitate. And every single day, if there's something that comes in front of me that I don't want to do, like I'm an introvert, me doing events, me doing podcasts, me making videos, me posting my pictures, me doing any of this stuff is me challenging myself and me growing as a person because I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in cannabis. I believe in CBD and I make my, my products. They're, they're organic. I use good, like cage free brown eggs, natural sugar, like, I take the extra time to make sure I'm not damaging the, the cannabinoids when I'm cooking them. Because uh -huh. that's important too. Whenever you cook, temperature is everything. Not opening the oven a hundred times. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. But I feel like if I'm going to if I'm gonna run myself into the ground for somebody else's company, why not run myself into the ground at least trying for myself, right? Uh -huh. Because now I've empowered myself to be able to help a wider group of people. Um, and that's what I live for. I love helping people and I love seeing people grow. And I see that when I see people start using cannabis and, and CBD. Not in the sense of let me get blazed to the wind day in and day out, sit on my couch. It's not even that. I don't think I could even be an honor student if I didn't smoke weed because I'm ADHD. Yeah. I don't take pills for that. I'm anxious. I don't take pills for that. You don't want to know what I do. I'll take a puff. I'll microdose just so I can focus and intake the information. But if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't like if, use cannabis or CBD, I wouldn't be able to have the capacity or the space in my brain to even absorb all the reading or assignments. And I want to learn that stuff. So I'm give, I feel like I'm giving myself an opportunity to have a life by using cannabis. Because before, it's like I just felt like a robot. And I don't want to be a robot. I want to be able to empower people and make them feel like I can do this. And so I talk to quite a few different people and just tell them, like, don't, like, I've helped people even apply for their LLCs like to start their own businesses. You know, I, I want to see people grow. And, and if I don't do it for myself, what am I, what kind of example am I being, uh -huh. you know? And so that's, that's what I'm all about. And even just like with me being a lesbian, I love that my company's les get baked and that it's open and everybody knows because it's bold. Yes, but I'm bold. I face my fears. I'm not afraid to be that one person to stand out and say, yes, I'm a lesbian because no companies are doing that. Like they just made it legal where me as a lesbian, I could walk into a business and get denied service because somebody's uncomfortable with my sexuality. Like wow. I want to be that company that's like, you know what, you're gay or you're socially awkward or you're poly. It doesn't even matter. You're a person. You matter. And I want the, the LGBT community to know that I mean, I, I'm not afraid to be that person. I love what I do. I love who I am. And since I embraced my sexuality and came out as a lesbian, I don't think that I could be happier. You know, you have to really feel good about who you are. I'm responsible for my own happiness. And I wanted to show in my business. So what better way than to bring it into my business to where people know this is Kaylee. This is what she's about. You know? That's that's amazing. The whole the whole thing is so amazing because it sounds so, you know, it comes up a lot obviously in the in the podcast serendipitous. You know, where it's like, here you are, you're looking for a solution for your own stuff going on, and hell, it's working for you. And then someone's asking you, hey, can you help me out? Someone else asks me, hey, can you help me out? And all of a sudden, you're combining these two loves that you have, right? Where it's the 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 baking, right, and it's being able right. to have infused products and being able to combine them and now making into a business. And not only that, but like you said, right. being, you know, being proud, being able to, to show who you are and breaking barriers within, within not only the, the industry, but within business um, in general, obviously, you know? Um, right. And, um, you know, I'd love to, you know, hear about that as well. You know, you talk about, you know, being bold and 
um, I think there's this, there's this kind of like, um, I don't know, people think that you have to be somebody for somebody else. You have to put on a show in business or you have to pretend to be something or you have to anything else, right? Or don't talk about that, right? That's not going to be good for business. Is it good for business, right? All that kind of stuff. And I, I, I tend to think the opposite where you just have to be so genuine, right? You have to be so genuine in, in the world. You have to be so genuine because you know what? I'm going to interact with whoever my clients are. Okay. I interact with them a lot, or I'm going to interact with people in business forever long, but I have to deal with me 24 hours a day, right? I have to live with the right. decisions I make 24 hours a day. So why would I want to put on a show for someone else, right? When I, I want to attract the people who are, who are going to like Maynard for who he is, right? And the same right. thing for you, right? Why would you want someone to like Kaylee for, you know, for, for the show that you put on, right? You have to be genuine. So I love that you've, you've made that. Now, tell me kind of your feedback or whatever you've gone, um, you know, being out and having it so, you know, part of the brand, right? Um, you know, tell, yeah. me, tell me about that a little bit. So I, I put a ton of thought into the business name. I really did. I wanted I to I love it, by the way. It's so funny. It's so great. Well, thank you. I, I love it, too. It's spunky, and it's out there. Like, I literally just, here you go, you know, and, and nobody yeah, has you to know, question. Right away, like, right oh. away. You know, I knew right away. I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, I'd love to have her on. I'd love to talk to her. This is awesome, you know? And, you know, the funny thing is, is every, let's say, like you, when you saw my business, it, it, drew, it drew your attention, right? Yeah. You contacted me. Yeah. However, when I'm talking to, like, my, the, one of the companies that I work with was going to work on Taking Me National and literally uh, told me I needed to change my business name or launch a secondary company. And it wasn't the first wow. time I'd heard it. Um, the first, the first person that offered me a THC contract, they literally was like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Like, are you sure? So I talked to my partner and I was just telling her like, listen, I, I don't know if it's the right move. I mean, I come from a small town where it's literally like five gay people when I was going to school that like, if you could even find that many. Um, so I, I, I totally looked at my pipe with my weed in it. I got distracted on my whole tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what's I just saying? Like, I just looked at my bowl. Sorry. No, you're talking about the, the companies that, that you're wanting to talk about taking you national. And they're saying, hey, psst, you, you're going to want to change your yeah. name. You're going to have a subsidiary. You're going to want to do something different because this I'm is I'm going to limit myself. Like, yeah. Uh, they said I was going to limit myself. So, you know, I felt it because I know that the people out there that don't support the gays and the the alphabet people they probably they don't like say. cbd or cannabis in general either right they they're the same don't. people but so what, what what's here, what are you really doing you know it's i, I talked to people from the south and they, they're not all about oh yeah cbd great they have so much stigma so much stuff going on that's yeah. aside from this right i lady great family everything soccer moms all these kind of stuff and people look at them sideways because Oh, you, you're in the cannabis industry. Oh, you, oh, you're going to go yeah, well, they're everybody a high. Xanax. Oh, exactly. You know, and that's Adderall. What, exactly. That's what <laughs> yeah, she said. Okay. She's, like, she's like, pop another Xanax, Karen, drink your wine, watch it down. Karen. Your wine. You know, like. <laughs> it's true though. It's like, I get that there's stipulations on it, but it's like, when you look at the people that are using it, like literally step back. You go to a business meeting in an office, you're generally uncomfortable, you have to prepare, you're nervous. You go to be around people in the cannabis industry and it's about business, but for whatever reason, the people that I've noticed in the industry, they have a better understanding of, of people. Like it's more laid back. Like you yeah. you talk about business, you do things, it's but you community. also acknowledge it's not just the other industry, person as a community. person. Exactly. Let me help you, right? Like mm -hmm. I haven't found such a, I haven't found any other communities that want to help build people as much as the people in the cannabis industry. I love it. And when you see people happy in their roles, mm -hmm. long term and excited, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be that person that I'm so stressed out in the office because I'm number crunching. Like you number crunch as a business, yes, but why not do that for myself? 
why not do it in a helping manner? Yes, I help people get into school, but they also push you to put people in school that maybe it's not really their dream, but it's number crunching. And that's where it was like, well, do I want to help? Do I want to continue this and help people this way where sometimes it's really not convenient? Because like as me, as my, as a business owner, I'm ethical. And I, if somebody asked me, Kaylee, if I take this treat, am I going to pass the UA? I'm going to tell you, if you eat like a thousand of these treats, you might test positive faintly, right? I'm honest. I want people to know what the risks are. I'm not going to schmooze people just to get a sale. Right. And that's the difference between the corporate world and my approach. Mm -hmm. Yes. I may limit myself, but I want to at least feel good about what I'm doing. And I've noticed that there's a lot of people in the industry that are the same, that have the heart to just want to help. Right. And I want to be around those people exactly. that work hard, that they don't want to just have a handout, right? They're not afraid to get their hands dirty and they want to help people. And the biggest thing I think now in the cannabis industry is just education. If you don't know something, look it up. Like even with, with, with cooking with cannabis, you can look up dosing guides, like all of that. There's so much information. I mean, I had like some lady come into the bakery one day and is like, well, I have, I forget the exact ailment that she had. I wish, I wish I could remember. It was like fibromyalgia or something. Yeah. yeah fibromyalgia. I think it was fibromyalgia. Literally. I was just like, okay, listen, she was super afraid to, to try it. And I was like, let me, let me get your email. I'm going to send you some information. Now I didn't have to do this because this is just some lady. She, she wasn't interested. I could have let her walk out the door with like a regular cupcake. Right. But if she's feeling stuck and she's talking about this, about with the lady at the bakery, she doesn't know me. She clearly has a problem, right? She feels defeated. You can see it on her face. So I was like, let me send you some information. And I went and researched for this lady how it would help her. Cannabis and CBD would help her. You go above and beyond people when you believe in what you're using. And for cannabis, it's like, it affects us. The people that use cannabis, the people that are around it every day, it's, it's hard to miss how it helps people. But then again, there's people that get too high that want to take one too many dabs or get blown to the face. There are those stoners, yes. But there are people like me as well and, and like you that manage the stress that comes with the business, manage daily problems without having all these additional ailments that come with it. So Amazing. Amazing. And that's the whole thing is doing good for people, you know, and being true. And, uh, you know, you're talking about um, now – you know, it's kind of not wanting to schmooze somebody just for the sale. And that's the whole point, right? Doing everything with integrity, doing everything with dignity. It's so important. Right. And, you know, now, you know, I want to transition a little bit and talk more about different, as, you know, let's get baked, the food, the products, yeah. right? And I want to talk about too, you know, first, first and foremost, um, was this something that you started off like, you know, having, uh, for yourself, maybe the THC side, and then you kind of incorporated it, you know, the CBD to do, uh, you know, to have your business. And then also another question is, you know, what's the source, you know, and, and uh, I know you talked about earlier, making sure that the, uh, that the, you keep the cannabinoids intact and the way that you go about it now, you know, using full spectrum. And I would love to get more into the science and, and kind of the, you know, the, the ingredients and everything that goes into your product. And I want to obviously talk about how delicious they look and, and the products themselves as well. I, so I love taking pictures and so does my partner. Uh, so we actually take all of our own pictures. So I know how good they look. Um, but my products, so I do use full spectrum. So I use a full spectrum CBD. It's through Hempavan. So it is third party lab tested. Um, that was super important to me as well as it being organic. I talked to so many CBD companies. Oh yeah. Before you got to vet your time. companies, you know, you got to, you got to get into bed with somebody, you know, <laughs> when you're marrying somebody, you know, it's like, you gotta, you gotta know what you're, you're giving to someone else, obviously, you know? And, well, uh, people will buy gas stuff. station CBD and like, oh no, it CBD didn't, didn't work for me. Well, Every, where'd you get it? Like, it's incredible. Like this whole gas station CBD thing, it just comes up all the time. It's such a bunch of bullshit, honestly. Like, I can't even believe that people would compare or try it, let alone compare it, you know, to anything else, right? It's, 
You go well, it's like you buy gas station pizza and compare it to like Red Devil's pizza. Yeah, yeah, what? exactly. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. Like, okay, so I didn't like it or like Little Caesars. You're gonna buy like, those pills. You're gonna buy those pills in the gas station. You know that they have there. You're gonna go to a pharmacist. You're gonna go to to a place, a reputable place where you know you can talk to somebody and get education. You know that what they're giving you is. It's Knowing good. what's in you your know. products is important. And so I made sure that I found an organic CBD company. Um, it's actually a, a lesbian owned company. Um, and then as far as my products go, I, I wanted to, like you go into dispensaries and you get edibles. And what I remembered when I first started getting into the industry or getting into edibles, cause I can't smoke that much. I have really poor lungs. And so, and also with edibles, it's more of a body thing, right? So it helps with my back pain, my muscle pain, um, my hip, like my, the pain that I have, it helps a lot more when you have the edibles, ingestibles. So um, I use like cage-free brown eggs, natural sugars. Um, I do make keto products and gluten-free as well, but I focus on the quality of the ingredients. Um, and also making sure that I'm not just throwing things together. Like I make everything that I make, I, I taste test it and I put my heart into it. Like I really love what I do. That's gotta be and really so tough doing the taste testing. You know, that's gotta be really tough. My neighbors <laughs> love me. Uh, I've, I've had people ask to be taste testers and I'm like, listen, my neighborhood would fight you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I make everything like with heart. And so it, each product that I make, it's super delicious. Like, and I make everything entirely from scratch. Like I love cooking. So making sure that all the ingredients are, are quality ingredients, they're organic ingredients. Um, and then also like with my packaging, you know, one of the biggest problems well, in the world right now is plastic, but in the cannabis industry, especially, we're one of the like biggest contributors to plastic, I feel like. I mean, you go into it and everything is in plastic. Yeah, yeah. So another thing to set, my, set myself aside besides everything else is that I put my products in four ounce mason jars. And so they are reusable. People use them to either for stash jars, nug, like nug jars, whatever. Yeah. Um, because... And I'm working on an incentive program. So if people return them, then they can get a credit an mm. in-store credit. But I wanted to work on sustainability and not being a contributor to the problem. So beyond my products and focusing on quality, flavor, and sustainability is pretty much my mission, my mission statement because I want to set myself aside so that I have I, I bring value and quality and that I care about my customers. And that's why I have such good ingredients. And I take the, co like I eat, like I have to spend quite, quite a bit to get the natural sugar, to get the good mm -hmm. butter, you know, all of that because I want to have that quality product. And I also want to show that I care about the environment by not having plastic. Um, so yeah. Well, yeah. Sustainable. I, I, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's amazing. You know, sustainability is a big issue, obviously. And we talk about it, you know, not just with the products, but even the cultivation side and, and everything that goes along with it. Um, and, you know, this is a green industry, right? We got to be green in all ways, obviously, you know, so. Uh, well, I feel like if the cannabis industry is bringing in so much money, why is it that my podunk little, little company is trying to take cuts for sustainability purposes? Like, it is not cheap to get jars, not cheap at all. I will eventually have hemp plastic. That is my goal. I'll get there. Um, but I don't know why the bigger companies don't look for more sustainable options. Like I get it's cheaper, but like nobody's taking that risk right now. In yeah. business, it's like, th this is the thing about business. So many different people think of different things every day, but most businesses are things that have been thought of and then just somebody's own twist on it, right? Like there's tons of, of people who are making CBD edibles or, or a regular bakery or whatever. But when you're, when you're establishing a business, it's not just about your customer service or your, or your product. It's about differenti differentiating yourself from other companies. Why yeah. would somebody choose you compared to the bakery down the road, right? Exactly, exactly. It's about how you present yourself. So I think it's, I, what, 
when you can give yourself a reason to stand out that's in a way that it's helping the earth, it's helping people, it's helping animals, it's literally like plastic. I don't think people realize how bad it is. Like it is, I literally wrote down, there's literally between 4.8 and 12.7 million tons of plastic that enters the ocean each year. What is that? Like, so anyways, I don't want to be that problem. And so I would hope to see that more companies would take that risk. Like if there's so much billions of dollars that are being made, why don't you put it back into the earth? Like make it sustainable. Like take that extra leap because it shows that you care as a company and that you have that integrity and that you're going to do your part. Oh, so. Yeah. People try and cut corner, corners everywhere, you know, and especially with the big business and this and that. And there are people doing it the right way too, you know. So you got a you got a mixed yeah. bag of everything. And I think, um, but yeah, you see a lot of the funding going into the big companies, and uh, you know they end up weeding themselves out. You know, no pun intended. Where it's you know these guys, uh, a lot of these people, they uh, they're running out of they're running out of money, even though they have all this funding, all this cash flow, and um, they're not able to turn it turn it around. You know, even though they're taking these shortcuts, I think this yeah. industry is a different kind of industry you know people come in here with with their traditional kind of business practices and you're seeing it just not working in the industry um because we're just it's a different community it's a different target the people who are buying are different you know the people who are running things are different and people coming in from the outside who are just doing the same thing that they've done and you know thinking that they can just duplicate what they've done their whole lives it's great but glad you've been able to be successful in other places but you're seeing it over yeah. and over and over again. These these same things are just not working, you know. And uh, it's right. it's different. So uh, there's a lot of right. challenges. There's a lot of challenges. I want to ask you too. You know, what's been the biggest challenge that you've had? The biggest obstacle that you've had? Uh, you know, with Liz got baked, and uh, and how you've been able to overcome it. I think the hardest obstacle is staying true to my vision. I know that I've had to adjust it here and there, but like. Like I told you, I put a lot of thought into even like the company name, right? Like, what do I want my culture to be? Like, I've gotten so much kickback. Edibles aren't a market you're going to be rich in. You should do plastic because it's way cheaper. You need to change your name because I don't like it. You're limiting your market. You know, all of that, uh, it's all up and it's all new. It's it's not the approach every single person is taking. And um, I want to have the solid values that I want to show people that I'm proud to be a lesbian. I'm, pr I love it when lesbian people or transgenders or gay men or polyamorous or whatever, somebody straight, I don't care. I, I love helping people and especially LGBT, because there is so much, even today in 2020, you would be amazed at, at the things that I hear as being a woman, like, I just haven't met the right guy, you know, or, or people taking a, a business meeting and turning it into a chance to hit on me. Like, no, like, this is about business. Wow. I get it. I'm a woman. But that's not how I do business. And so you would be amazed at the boldness of some people. Right. But it still does happen. Um, but it's just like knowing what you want to do, having a clear vision and sticking to it. And so that's been the hardest thing for me is because I'm so new to the city. I'm so new to putting myself out there, um, with events and social media. Like I barely use social media before I started my business. All this is new. But the one thing that I know is why I started this and it was to help people and to be proud of who I am and proud of my direction and for taking the chance on myself. And so that would be, I think the hardest thing is just staying true to being an openly lesbian company who cares about not using plastic, you know, like, that's been the biggest fight and I'll keep fighting that battle because it's something I truly believe in. I want people to feel comfortable with, with being gay and, and being more, you know, I'm not pushing people to be gay, just being comfortable with who they are and embracing it and not letting your mind get you caught up in, I can't do this or the, the chance of failure. You know, it's, 
I'm going to take a chance on myself and this is what I'm about. And if I can help somebody, then my day is made because that's why I started this. So not losing my values and my core and, and my core to, to please other people. And because I could oh, get yeah. further ahead if I, if I didn't take these paths. Right. Yeah. But I do because it's what I believe in and I'm proud to be me and I'm proud of where, as far as I've come in this amount of time, and I want other people to take those chances on themselves and make the same choice. You know, if you're not happy with where you're at, take responsibility. Nobody's forcing you to be unhappy. You know, you're responsible for that happiness. And so if you're not happy, literally figure out something that you love or what's going to change that for you and make it happen. Amazing. Amazing. I love that attitude. And, you know, now that you have your own business and, you know, talk about being true to yourself and everything and, you know, a lot, a lot of different stages. You know, I'm always interested. I ask everybody the same question. Um, you know, how do you define success and what does success look like for you? So to define success, I think is to, that's a really great question. How do I define success? business life anything you know it's uh it's not it's not an easy question it took me a while say, took me a lot of to, you know to to know my answer it's the best. i should have thought about that i mean i that's so funny how do i define success so if i were to think of myself as like hey i i am successful at this point um i think it's finding whatever lights up your passion if you can find something that well i mean people do things that they don't like every day so for me, I'll feel like I've hit success when the business is running smoothly and I've started my nonprofit and I'm helping people and inspiring them to take the chances on themselves. When I see people that are, are using CBD or even just educating themselves about it that are around me, I think that that, that would be success to me is just making it and being able to help people. I think that I'm getting close, like I'm on my road. I, don't, I guess I don't know for sure because I'm, I'm redefining my path every day. So I should, I should make a standard, like this will be successful. I'm, I'm a Virgo. So if I hit a, if I make a, a goal for myself, I'm like, actually I need to get it here. Um, but I think when, when people are successful, it's just when you find something that you are happy in what you're doing and whether that be if you're making the money you want to make or you have the position that you set your goal for, if you're, if you're happy with where you're at, happiness is the hardest thing to obtain these days. I feel like um, people are never okay with where they're at. It's always, well, that person has a better purse or that person has prettier hair or whatever, just being content with what you have, because when you're grateful for what you have, that's when you find happiness and not comparing yourself to others. So I think that that truthfully is what success is, is really just feeling good. Hey, like I did this, I hit my goal and I'm going to continue setting goals and making them. That to me is success because it's, I think everything is about a mentality and your perception on what you're going to do with your life. And every person is going to be different because some people are motivated more by money. Some people are motivated more by helping some people, you know, whatever your motivation is, if you found that and you're doing that and living that, then you're successful in your own right. So amazing. Amazing. No doubt about it. Living it, giving back. I heard a lot of great stuff there. Um, you know, being happy with where you're at, you know, being grateful for where you're at, all, all the amazing stuff now. Um, you know, as we close, how can listeners find out more about you, about Let's Get Baked, connect with you, buy your delicious products, everything like that? So I, my website is lesgetbaked.com and that's L-E-Z-G-E-T-B-A-K-E-D.com. And then I'm on Instagram, Let's Get Baked LLC as well as Facebook. Um, and yeah, so I mean, the three of those, I mean, I have a Pinterest too, if you'd like that, it's let's get big, but um, yeah, so definitely any of those, if you want to place an order, it's if you go to my website, I actually have a sale going on through Friday now, um, because it is my one year. And we hit 
some pretty good milestones for growth. And so my products are 40% off right now through Friday. Um, and yeah. Very so, good. Very good. And do you ship, you're shipping nationally now or is it just. Yeah. Uh, anywhere in the good. USA actually, awesome. cause it is full spectrum. So. Yep. Sweet. Definitely awesome. good to go. Kaylee. Wow. So grateful. I'm grateful. I, this was successful, you know, and uh, really grateful to have you on and um, really grateful for sharing your battle, your yeah, journey, you everything, your story, and I uh, really great, really appreciate it. So uh, thanks for jumping on. Good luck to you for the rest of, of 2020 and beyond. All right. Thank you. You too. It's nice to meet you. We at Calican are passionate about cannabis marketing, branding, and web design. If you're a cannabis entrepreneur and you know you need an uptake in business or an upgrade in the way your customers perceive you, come check us out at calican.com and schedule a time to speak with us. Plans start at $248. Thanks for listening in to Dank Discussions, and we are so grateful for each and every one of you. We want to continue making dank content you want, so give us some feedback about the topics you want covered. Feel free to reach out to us at grow at calican.com. That's C-A-L-A-C-A-N-N.com. And follow us on Instagram for our latest updates.